We got a couple of pieces of Bleach news in particular regarding Taite Kubo and the Bleach Styles in Your Blood War. For starters, it says a Bleach Styles in Your Blood War arc poster illustrated by Taite Kubo himself will be included in next week's issue of Weekly Shonen Jump, issue number 51, which they've been doing a lot of those like posters and promotional things kind of just to keep people going, which I don't know how it's doing over there in Japan, but I know 100% over here in the West, a lot of people are really hype and into tune with Bleach of Styles and your Blood War so I think for the most part over here in the West at the very least it is a massive success I don't know what it's looking like over there in Japan I haven't seen it in like the top 10 anime rankings or anything like that so I'm not sure what the viewership is looking like also considering the fact that it's on certain streaming services and deals you know outside of the US is on Disney Plus but then over here it's on Hulu so we probably can't get for sure all of the numbers but I'm gonna say that it's a hit over here in the West just because I'm seeing way too much people loving and enjoying Bleach the Styles in your Blood War. But we also got a little bit more insight. It says here, a new Taite Kubo interview with the anime staff will also be published in next week's issue of Weekly Shonen Jump. Again, issue number 51. So we will be having a Kubo interview for you in next episode of Forever News. I will break it down, see what's good, what's on good old Kubo's mind. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty much seemingly a big success. Episode 5 alone was one of the best episodes of or one of the most action-packed at that episodes of bleach it looks great the music is great the art is great the animation's dope like yeah I, i'm pretty sure it's a big success but i could be off on that let me know what you think do you think that bleach is living up to the expectations with this thousand year blood war also any expectations for this taite kubo interview anything you want him to spill the beans on so to speak or speak on just in general i know some people including myself have had a couple of issues with some of the pacing but for the most part they're just kicking major tail and this is one of studio puro's best outings so to speak with an anime adaptation so gotta clap it up for puro when they get them right and bleach a thousand of blood wars going insane and can't wait for this kubo interview see what the man himself has to say dude it's like a rock star over there and jump like there's wholesome authors there's smart authors then we got like rock stars like taiti kubo he's a rock star before we get started if you would hit that subscribe button and hit that bell to get notified we drop new episodes of forever news every saturday 12 p.m est and throughout the week we re-upload those segments into smaller bits for your viewing pleasure what are you waiting for let's get into the news shall we i was a little bit skeptical confused whatever you want to call it regarding this piece of news in particular because i was under the impression when i first heard about this release with my hero academia i thought we was all getting it in fact i've been looking around like yo when are we gonna get that game again or whatnot like what's happening here but apparently it seems like maybe it was in some sort of limbo and not necessarily completely immediately coming over here because according to this it says k lab obtains rights to my hero academia online games for release world Worldwide outside of China. It says game developer K Labs announced on Monday that it has acquired the rights to make My Hero Academia online games for release worldwide outside of mainland China. And I'm wondering if this includes the My Hero Academia like Fortnite game. What is it? My Hero Academia Rumble? Like, is that a part of the deal or is this just that they're going to be able to make their own games as well? Like, shout outs to K Lab because K Lab are the ones behind Bleach Brave Souls, one of the best, if not the best, gotcha games of any anime I. I've seen like Bleach Brave Souls still to this day 2022 my favorite gotcha game of all time period like it's phenomenal so if they make something even remotely close to that with My Hero Academia, that will be fire. The company is planning to develop several online games that players in the franchise fans all over the world can play. K-Lab is of course known for games such as Love Live, School Idol Festival, Bleach Brave Souls, I told ya, and Captain Tsubasa Dream Team. And yeah, I guess I'm just a little bit skeptical on like, so I guess they have also licensed it. Like it's not only exclusive to that Rumble game. I thought it was just going to be like, they got the rights to that Rumble game and they were holding it over in China. So a little bit confusion there, but yeah, it seems as though My Hero Academia is going to get more games via K-Lab and I hope K-Lab does it right because K-Lab has handled Bleach Brave Souls phenomenally especially considering the fact that Bleach didn't have a lot of things to promote it pretty much that game held Bleach down for years upon years once the manga ended there was no anime there was no films there was no other games there was really not much for Bleach except Brave Souls so always got to give a salute to K-Lab for holding it down for the Bleach IP 
while things were a little uncertain and it looks like now they're getting my hero academia hopefully they make a good game just as the same or in the ballpark as bleach brave souls because that game was fire trigun fans or disappointed fans i guess you would say depending on how you feel about the upcoming trigun anime in case you don't know there's a new trigun anime coming by studio orange that is going to be a blend of mainly 3d with like it looks like they have 2d blended in there but it's really a 3d anime some people are disappointed some people are upset about it personally i think it looks kind of cool and i'm starting to soften up to the idea of the inevitable 3d because that's legit inevitable of where the industry is going and it looks high for the most part but apparently if you're really eager to see trigun's premiere uh it's going to be coming out a bit early it says here trigun stampede episode one to premiere at special anime nyc panel there's a lot going on at anime nyc next week and you're definitely going to want to be front and center for this one if you're a fan of yasuhiro naito's trigun some of the folks from studio orange the production company behind the upcoming trigun stampede anime were previously Previously announced as special guests and they'll be officially bringing episode one's world premiere along with them the special trigon stampede panel will be held on friday november 18th at anime nyc and chief producer waki kiyotaka and producer yoshihiro watanabe of studio orange in attendance beyond the special panel and screening both waki kiyotaka and yoshihiro watanabe will be available for signings on both friday and saturday anime nyc will be held november 18th through the 20th at the Javits Center in New York City and I am gonna lie I I'm not gonna go to NYC for that no <laughs> like if I ain't go for a chainsaw man I'm not going for Trigun's 3D thing but I am going to be watching this whenever episode one drops over here on streaming services I will give it a watch and I will give it an honest critique a legit critique not everybody said that it looks like trash so that's my opinion because a lot of people do that everybody said that i ain't trying to deal with the mob boom i'm gonna say that it looks like no 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 we don't do that over here so go subscribe to my main channel when trigun comes out i'll give you guys an honest if it sucks i'll tell you it sucks if it's good i'll tell you it's good bottom line